Kentucky. A Caribbean cruise is a great idea, but not the standard M.O. for teams in the Puerto Rico shootout with the road to the championship narrow. Welcome to the Puerto Rico shootout, where today we move into the semifinals of the winner's bracket. Pittsburgh taking on number four, Kentucky. Later, UCLA takes on Maryland. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to the Puerto Rico shootout with Glenn Buckner. I'm Dwayne Stats. Great to have you with us. Pitt comes in unbeaten. The Panthers are 5 and all. They have Kentucky today. Yesterday, Glenn, they may have very well served notice. They are for real with their upset victory over Xavier, the backbone of this team out front, Montego Cummings. And Montego Cummings, they've got an All-American candidate who can do a lot with the basketball. Here on a fast break, pulls up and knocks down an easy little jump shot. Showing here a little bit of range, knocks down the three. They want him to get leadership. He's a scoring guard. The Kentucky area long known for colonels in that state, but from this year forward, they may be known for a prince, as in freshman Tayshawn Prince. And Tayshawn Prince, they found a good one here. Look at him, 6'8", take the ball and get a finish going to the basket. And here on the finish, here's a guy 15 points in 29 minutes to go along with three steals. Guard play will be crucial today for both these teams, especially for Pitt. They're going to have to get a lot of minutes from Cummings. They may get some help from their swingman, 6'9", sophomore, Attila Cosby, who had a great day yesterday, scoring 23 against Xavier. We have Kentucky against Pitt coming up. The Midnight Gambler 2, Long Island's first and only floating casino. Experience the thrill of Vegas on the Midnight Gambler 2, sailing daily from Freeport's Nautical Mile. Blackjack, Caribbean stud poker, craps, roulette, video poker, and the loosest slots. The Midnight Gambler 2 is a fun-filled getaway, including three bars, two floors of games, and countless chances to win. The Midnight Gambler 2 sails at noon at 7.30 p.m., seven days a week, year-round. There's plenty of free parking, so come aboard and win your fortune on the Midnight Gambler 2. Call for reservations today. Hobby enthusiasts from around the island know that the Nassau Hobby Center in Freeport has offered the best selection of hobby supplies since 1946. Nassau Hobby Center is a factory authorized sales and service center for Lionel and LGB trains. Plus, we carry N-Gage and HO trains. For the outdoor hobbyist, Nassau Hobby Center features a full line of Kyosho remote control cars, trucks, boats, planes, and helicopters, all at discount prices. Stop in for a free catalog and discover your hobby at the Nassau Hobby Center in Freeport. This is my Puerto Rico. Come, discover it. And experience the sounds of 500 years of history. Feel the sound of adventure. Enjoy the sound of our beautiful deep ocean. And the most exciting nightlife in the Caribbean. Only Puerto Rico sounds like this. Only Puerto Rico puts it all within your reach. Not a bite in four hours. <laughs> I got another one. I'm Hank Parker. If you want deep sea fish in action, get Radica. Here, you bring him in. You take a lot of wine. Radica, it's just like the real thing. Fish combo, cone, a great barrier reef, marlin, sailfish, swordfish, they strike all the time. I got an 800 pounder. Game shakes when they strike. Find them with pump and real action. So who needs a boat? <laughs> get deep sea fishing. Another great game for Radica. Make her the original lunker in bass fishing. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by the Puerto Rico Tourism Company. Welcome back to Puerto Rico. A big one this afternoon. Pittsburgh and Kentucky, the defending national champion Kentucky Wildcats, ranked fourth in the country. Pittsburgh yesterday with a victory over ranked Xavier. The Panthers have an eye on the rankings in their future. Come again with a record of 5 and 0. Oh. We'll take a look at the starting lineups for Ralph Willard's Pittsburgh Panthers. Isaac Hawkins has really stepped up in the middle for this team. He is another important facet of this Panther club. They'll have to get quality minutes from him for Kentucky. Turner and Prince out front. Paget had only three yesterday. 
They're looking for more there. Evans and Bradley with 10 in 23 minutes yesterday has picked up the slack in the middle. Ralph Willard out of Holy Cross. Fifth year at Pitt. Last year 11 and 16. And Tubby Smith a national championship in his first year. These two coaches were assistants together under Rick Patino. The officials for this game Donnie Gray J.D. Collins and Alvin Barea. Pittsburgh beat Kentucky. This one is controlled by Pittsburgh Greer. Cummings. It'd be interesting to see what kind of tempo this game takes on because Kentucky is a team that likes to speed it up and, they, and Pittsburgh showed yesterday they could run with Xavier. So it'll be interesting to see whether Kentucky speeds it up or tries to take advantage of some of their size. And the first shot of the game by Hawkins will not go down and Kentucky comes back. Turner with a give and there's his first assist as Bradley finishes the play. And it happens because Turner forces the defense to get back. They don't and lose Michael Bradley under the basket. Coming to the long pass down court. Taylor now underneath Hawkins and he converts for a pair. And, and Hawkins and Cross, they have two guys who are very active on the glass. And, it, and when the Jules Suleiman, the freshman, comes in, I'll be interested to see how he matches up with that kind of quickness. Turner to Evans, Ishimu Evans. Padgett pops out front, looking inside for Bradley. Prince, he'll take his first shot of the day. Not going to go this time. And the rebound to Cosby. Cummings is coming off Prince, so Prince is going to have to make some jump shots. Montego oh. coming, spinning. Back out, Cosby starts to move from the side. Not going to go, and up for the rebound, Turner. And a whistle as Turner reaches the midcourt stripe. Cummings is going to be assessed with a foul. Yeah, but with Kentucky, you can see they send their guards to the line, but here to the rebound, you see Wayne Turner forcing him up the defense, re reacting to him, allowing Michael Bradley to get free under the basket. And Cummings picks up a foul trying to pick up Turner on that fast break. They can obviously ill afford to get Cummings in any kind of foul trouble because as much as he's a scoring guard, he, he dictates their tempo and he's showing some leadership this year. That's what they want out of it. Little long off the back of the rim and out. Rebound. Down to Taylor. Front court. Opening minutes of this one. Game tied at two. Cosby. Low spins. Baseline. Rolls off. Bradley with a rebound. Some bigger bodies for Cosby to shoot over today. Prince on the left wing. Evans inside Bradley. Oh. Good position. Bradley, a little drop step and a move. He drop step and as he went to pick the ball, he got his elbow hooked inside so the defender couldn't keep him from turning to his left shoulder for the layup. Kentucky takes the 4-2 lead. Montego Cummings matched against Turner. Yeah, they I think Kentucky's made the decision, Dwayne, to, to go with the big guys. Pound it inside and force Pittsburgh to have to guard this size. He can make a play from here by himself. Pittsburgh working the perimeter. Kelly Taylor. And Greer, Ricardo Greer. Starts to spin. Lost the ball. Retains possession to Taylor. Five on the shot clock. And here's a charge coming against Pitt. That is some defense, Dwayne. That's what I said all about. I'm sitting here watching Ishimo Evans guard Ricardo Greer. Greer is a decent ball handler with Ishimo, who last year was the sixth man. This time was playing some pretty solid defense. You take a look inside again. Watch him get that little elbow to keep Cosby from getting over there, and that's how he's able to get that one to go down because Cosby can't get to the shot. Across the court, Padgett shovels it inside, but broken up, picked away by Hawkins. Now Taylor back. Hawkins trying to go inside, missed the shot. Kentucky right back. Kentucky accelerating with Turner knocked away Hawkins had a hand on it Cummings loses it across the baseline. These teams will get up and down the court. Ralph Willard and Tubby Smith with similar approaches to this game. Good 
both for having been on Rick Pitino. They, they both get some really good up tempo styles. I just think it looks down here early that the size is going to be a bigger factor than, than Pittsburgh would like it to be. And one of the concerns of Pittsburgh is Evans takes it to the bucket. He will not get the roll. Bradley puts it back. Michael Bradley with a pair. Soft hands. He missed the first tip, but he's not only soft hands, quick feet to reposition to get himself back up for the easy putback. And to follow up on your point, when one of the concerns of Ralph Willard is lack of depth up front. He knows it's going to be a battle there. Uh, there's no question it's going to be a battle, Dwayne, it, because they, you got fouls to give. You know, they can start, they got a front line now basically 6'10, 6'9 with Padgett and Bradley, and they haven't brought uh, Suleiman in yet. Hawkins inside from about 12 gets it to drop. 6'4 Kentucky. Hawkins had 19 against Xavier yesterday, second leading score on the Pitt Panther Club. Yeah, he, behind Montego Cummings. Dwayne, he had 12 rebounds too. I mean, he, he's a very active player for him. Evans out front, Padgett. Turner from the top of the circle, a little short, front of the rim, Hawkins rebounds. If you notice the matchup, they've got Tayshawn Prince trying to guard Cummings to make sure that when he shoots shots, that he has to shoot him over a 6'9", if you will, a 7-foot wingspan of Prince. So well, let's watch that matchup when we talked about at the top. Cosby is fouled by Tayshawn Prince, and we have a timeout on the floor. It's a two-point game. Kentucky leading here 6-4 with 15-24 left to play in the first half. Tayshawn Prince is called for that foul. He was the one actually guarding uh, Vontigo Cummings, and he tried to get back and help out. And, and Cosby is, is really, a, a, I, I like his activity. I don't know if his overall strength is going to be enough, but he's put on some, some strength from Washington, D.C., not afraid. Sixth meeting between these two teams, as we mentioned. The last time they met, Pitt beat Kentucky 85-67. That was in November of 91 at Kentucky. Cosby has another one coming. He came into this tournament averaging seven and a half. That big day yesterday misses this one. Well, he, he looked very determined, and he was in a good rhythm yesterday. It'd be interesting to see if he can do that here against Kentucky. Nice give to Bradley from Pat. Oh, that's it's not going to go, but a goaltending charge here against Pitt. So count the bucket. Yeah, no doubt about it. The ball is in the rim, and it got pulled out. But again, it was size to size. I mean, Padgett gets the, Tayshawn Prince throws the ball. We'll take a look. If the ball is anywhere on the rim, no doubt about it, that's goaltending. You know, the, and the official with the best view, vantage point, is the one to call it. And right now, they're discussing not counting the bucket. More on that when we return. Happy birthday. Oh, good, another apple. Where's Danny? Oh, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man. No time to talk. Ah, 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 ah. Staying alive. Staying alive. Ah, 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 ah. Staying alive. Thank you. We have a cinnamon macadamia encrusted sea bass and a warm banana chutney. Looking for something really delicious? Painted chicken neck with the mango habanero mojo and sauce romanesco. Sauce what? <laughs> we recommend Wendy's new Steakhouse Bacon Cheeseburger, a naturally smoked blend of Swiss and cheddar bacon and sautéed onions in a savory steak sauce. And finally, a warm lobster cappuccino. Lobster cappuccino? Lobster cappuccino. I hear it. I just don't believe it. Wendy's new Steakhouse Bacon Cheeseburger. Dig in. Mike Ditka for 1-800-COLLECT. Hey, come on, ladies! Hey, get mad! Make believe I just insulted your mama! Or make believe I just traded you! Make believe I just called you collect without using 1-800-COLLECT! Hey, but it's 10 cents a minute every evening with 1-800-COLLECT. Stop, stop, guys! I'm going to get you! Stop! 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute every evening all week long. 
6-5 Kentucky leading this one discussing that last play. We'll remind you tonight coming up on ESPN, the Hall of Fame tip-off classic featuring number seven Kansas against UNLV. That begins at 7.30. More action from the Chase preseason NIT. That's Stanford number two and North Carolina number eight. The number one team, Duke, back in action in the Great Alaska Shootout against Fresno State. When they're not going to count the bucket after all. They missed the call. I mean, you see the touch pass go in here, thrown right in. Now watch. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it that the ball is hit. And I thought Isaac Hawkins hit it, and it was clearly on the rim, but the officials decided not to give the basket. And I think their official call is basket interference against Evans. Offsetting calls? I, I don't know. I, this is really a strange development. Kentucky out of that with a basketball. Wait, Kentucky wait. thought they had the bucket, but they it was the, ruled the against back. them, and they got the ball back. That's why it's so strange. Now it's taken away. Okay, by what, Taylor. What they did on, on, on this fast break. Both players, they said, touched the ball, so it's a jump ball in a possession area. Offsetting calls, as it turns out. No bucket, and Kentucky got possession. This last one knocked away as Pittsburgh retains possession. Made a switch, and they've got this time Wayne Turner on Vantigo Cummings. Got quickness there. This is one Cummings can take over the top of, of Turner because getting around him is going to be a lot more difficult. Kelly Taylor, all lost there for a moment by Hawkins. Back out to Taylor, who was limited to just 10 games last year because of a foot injury. 6'1 junior. You know, he also, I mean, in the year before, he had redshirted. So he's basically, you know, he missed, he only played 10 games. He's almost two years out of real serious competition. On the way, they just beat the shot clock. No good. Greer missing the long range jumper. Long pass from Prince to Padgett. He got Turner the across trip. the court, Evans. Oh, he tried. And he did walk. That, that's almost poetic justice because there's no question that Scott Padgett walked. Scott Padgett's Scott gonna Padgett leave. Is, is on the way out of the game and has really struggled as you take a look at Bradley inside. They've taken Padgett and set him down. Now, here's a guy that shoots, that last year shot 37% almost from the three point line. He hasn't made a three point shot in the last, and if he doesn't make one today, in the last four games. Kamara's First game he in there for him now. Lockhart off the bench for Pittsburgh. A one point contest. Montego Cummings pops out. They got the small lineup out basically with three guards. You see, he'll pull up with range. Way short. Bradley up with that miss on the air ball. Bad decision. That's the shot you can get. The shot clock's running down. Prince, a three-pointer. Not going to go this time. Cosby rebounding. Cummings will shoot it again long this time, but a whistle. And that's Prince's second foul, I believe, if they call that on him. Tubby Smith upset over the call. Well, what Tubby is saying is basically that he didn't think Tashawn Prince Tayshawn Prince fouled him. What he thought happened was this, that the shooter, Fontigo Cummings, fell down. Cummings will go to the line for Ralph Willard's club. 65% this year from the free throw line. And misses this one. And I think he's had some growth, some of it being maturity. I think that's an area he's very much going to have to improve upon because as he looks at his, his career, that will really enhance his position as a, a point guard, even though he is a scoring point guard. Bradley leaves Jamal McGlure on the floor now for Kentucky. Second shot good by Cummings. That ties the game at six at 13 15. So Kentucky has two two different big men in. <laughs> That's why Ralph Willett was a little concerned. Sean Smith on the floor out front. Wayne Turner. Evans and a whistle on the elbow as he started to turn that left corner. Yeah, Hushimu Evans, who hadn't made a jump shot, I would force if I, I, I'm out there, Hawkins, um, Holmes, I'm sorry, get out there. You've got to make a guy make a shot. Don't foul him just because he's turning the corners, especially when you got length on him. 
Kentucky basketball. Here is the Ishimo Evans of this year. And they bring in Anthony and Byron Anthony making this trip tomorrow. Misses the inbound shot. Cosby with a rebound. And oh, a great pass inside. Hawkins with a move up and in. Yeah, that's what team about Timo Cummins. Montego found his way out of front. You got to keep your head up, point guards. If you're playing out there, get your head up. There may be somebody in front. Move it up. McGlure battling Hawkins underneath. They were really going at it for a sequence. Now Tucker down to the line, up and in from the baseline left. Nice little turn by Turner. The defense is so concentrated on the big people inside, they didn't get over the help. Jeremy Holmes out front for Pitt. Attila Cosby working against Kamara. Lockhart, now Holmes. Long range jumper. Lockhart nails it. Yeah, well, Lockhart. 41% yeah. shooter from three point range. Yeah, he'll, he'll knock him down. He was third in the Big East from three point line. You've got to get out on him. McClure and pushed out by Hawkins. Turner tries to put it up and is fouled. Hawkins came out to confront him. And yeah. he picks up the foul. They were, what I enjoyed about the whole situation is you, you they, Ralph Willett wants Montego Cummings to leave. The first thing he went to Hawkins and said, just go straight up with your arms and force him to shoot over you. And, you know, sometimes when players are, are really scores, there's a tendency to be more concerned about what you do as opposed to the balance of your team. That's how they've tried to extend Cummings' awareness of what's going on on the floor. So Turner at the line hits this one. He's 7 of 9 this year from the free throw line. Back into the game, Kelly Turner for Pitt. Cummings will get a breather. And Chris Seabrooks in there briefly as well. He replaces Ricardo Greer. Seabrook had a little surgery. He's a big athletic player, again, trying to combat the size. You bring in a big, healthy, strong guy to just steal some minutes here is all Ralph Willard is trying to do. We have a timeout on the floor, 11-10. Kentucky here, 11-47 to play. When it comes to heeding the call of the wild, National Car Rental knows there's really only one place to go. Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park. Because as the official car rental company of Walt Disney World Resort, National gets you in your car and on the savannah fast for an exciting adventure you'll never forget. So what are you waiting for? Let's go wild to Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park with National Car Rental. Well, my first tattoo was mostly my whole back, so. <laughs> so. And that was her second? This was my second, yeah. I don't know, it's friendship tattoos in Tibet. And yeah, I mean, we really don't, I mean, we don't know how to read Tibet Hope it's or anything friendship. like that. <laughs> yeah, it might not even say friendship. Yeah. But, um, but basically, <laughs> I... We have some vicious yeah. fights, so. Yeah, but <laughs> most friends do, <laughs> right? Leonard and Vernita Cox wanted to refinance their house. It took the bank 60 days just to return their call, so they called the money store. From the time they applied to the time they got their check, 11 days. That's all it took to pay off their bills and get back on track. So give us a call. Some things are too important to put on hold. The Money Store, 1-800-LOAN-YES. Pitt leading number four, Kentucky 11-10 in the semifinals of the winner's bracket from the Puerto Rico shootout. College football coming up tomorrow on ESPN. Number 15, Virginia. 19, Virginia Tech from Blacksburg. Then Tennessee, the second-ranked team against Vanderbilt, followed by Michigan and Hawaii from Honolulu. It all begins with college game day. College football show of record at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Ryan Hogan is reported into the game for the Kentucky Wildcats coming out of the timeout. Taylor handles the ball against Hogan for Pittsburgh. Oh, 
Holmes takes the bounce pass out. Lockhart. Taylor working against Hogan and a whistle. It's going to be a push on Hogan. Yeah, because Taylor showed that three-point shot, and he, he will shoot him. I mean, that's not something he necessarily wants to do, but he'll stroke it up there. And if he looks like he's going to take the shot, you've got to close out under control, and Hogan didn't do that. Holmes off the inbound. will put it up and in for three. And had a great-looking stroke, too. I mean, he stepped right in it, knowing how to knock it down. Holmes, a junior out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Junior college transfer, hitting the three. Al Swall Smith steps up and he counters with a three. How about the nice little tap out by uh, McClure in there? He got the ball and couldn't control it to grab it. So he just tipped it. Jeremy Holmes handling the basketball. Cummings getting a breather on the bench for Pitt. They know they're going to need him for 30 to 35 minutes in this game. And as long as they can, you know, keep it close early, they don't want to keep him out of the game. They're going to try to save him. Taylor's shot is deflected, putting up a hand, McGlure. But in the meantime, a whistle and a foul against Kentucky. McGlure did a good job, I thought, closing up the lane that time. But they they made the call against him. And to the line goes Taylor. Ralph Willard has done a very good job every place he's been. He went to Western Kentucky and did an outstanding job. Shot will not drop. Taylor a little under 60 percent. See that time was the shot coming over. They, they call that one I thought almost after the block because Taylor can beat Hogan at almost any moment. So Hogan has got to be wise in what they call space. And by space, I mean if you're playing against a guy that's quicker than you, you space yourself so you can stay in a good defensive position. Taylor on the miss, and Smith into the front court for Kentucky. Hogan working against Lockhart on that right side. It's all Smith and Taylor. Smith had to go back to get it. Takes it inside. Kamara off the glass and in. Nice little find by Saul Smith, Saul Smith because he was in trouble. Because Taylor was right where he needed to be defensively. Kamara in the book. He had eight yesterday and nine rebounds against Colorado. Kentucky grabbing the lead by one. Lockhart with a three. Too long. Anthony. Now to Smith. He'll pop another three. That's no good. Kamara reaching over the back of Cosby. No foul against Kentucky. When you're in traffic, you've got to be able to find people. You see right there, Jules Suleiman makes himself available, which is the first thing. But Saul Smith, Saul Smith was able to find him, which is also as important. When you get into that small area, being able to get yourself an opening. Kamara departs. Padgett is back. Pittsburgh has Cummings, Hawkins, and Greer all back. If, and, and what Kentucky has done is come with a little quicker lineup with some size. Turner. She, I'm sorry. Shimu Evans is a guy. See, he's out on Taylor, and he's at 6'5". Taylor's about 6'1". But the, that space, see how much room he's trying to give him? That's what you call spacing, because you can't guard him close. Lockhart. Tough shot. From inside. About a 14-footer draws the foul on the push. Charge the foul to Saul Smith. So a shooting foul. 9.23 to play. See, he's um, very well uh, represented with his tattoos on his arm. <laughs> Yeah, I like this team that Ralph Willard has put put together here. I mean, it's a team. First of all, they they feel like if they can stay healthy. First of all, I think that's the key to anybody's success during the course of the season. But they can make a lot of people have to come play them, and that's what you want to be able to do. Make teams have to adjust to your style of play. Off to their best start under Ralph Willard at five and zero. Oh. They can be a physical team. A lean team and here's a steal from Smith Lockhart picked it away. Montego Cummings 
down the lane, and it will not go for him. Padgett covers on it, and a reach in there, and I think that could be against Cummings. It is against Cummings, and it's a bad foul. And he's tapping himself on his head, because that's a bad foul. You're in a position where all Padgett did was get a rebound. The risk of fouling there is better than your chance of getting the ball. You see him go to the basket strong here, and now he, Van Teagle has to shoot that over Bradley, so he overshoots it. The ball comes to Padgett, and you'll see Van Teagle Cummings come right in on the other side for the foul. So in this tie game, Kentucky gets possession. Smith departs for Kentucky. Desmond Allison, the freshman, 6'8 freshman, enters the game. Yeah, well, Smith is not somebody I don't think saw, uh, Tubby Smith wanted to take out because he, he likes the speed that he was getting out there, but Saul had made some bad judgments, and you can't afford to keep anybody on the floor doing that. Turner comes to the top of the key. Lockhart with him. Evans, this is a three. Will not go. The putback by Padgett. Well, maybe they can get him into the game. They need because they need his outside shooting. That's what Kentucky really lacks as you look forward and look at them going down the road. Padgett averaging 11 and a half a game this year, but had just three in yesterday's game against Colorado. Lockhart looking for that shot in the corner, but couldn't find it. He's got people jumping, and I'm telling you, he's a good 18 feet from the basket, and he ball fakes. Right here, you see Hashimu Evans take a jump shot, and then on the left side of your screen, the ball will come up tipped by Allison, and you see put back quickly with one hand with Scott Padgett. Sometimes an easy put back can get your rhythm going. The ball tipped out of bounds by Allison, belonging to Pitt. The change in defense, so one, two, two. Remember yesterday we saw this and they had Tayshawn Prince as that point guy. He's not in the game now. Taylor backs it out, working against the zone. Cummings off to Taylor. Tough shot. And the three, he nails it. I mean, it was a tough shot because I'm telling you, Wayne Turner was stepping in to try to block the shot. The junior out of Washington, D.C. gives Pitt a one-point lead. Bradley swings it, Padgett. Oh. oh, Evans, great ball movement there. Evans from Turner for two. And it helps when you've got people willing to give up the ball. Unselfish play, never touch the ground over half court. Put some pressure on Pritt, they have to get some shots inside. They, they, they gotta keep taking jump shots. Those will go against you. That hit the shot clock, that's my point. The position is, is significantly lessened by you taking jump shots. Time out here in Puerto Rico. 7.27 left. Kentucky on top. It's not your ordinary town. Okay, real good. It's not your ordinary crime. You want your own wife kidnapped. Are you, hon? And she's definitely not your ordinary cop. Think I'm gonna buy her? Oh, jeez. We got a shooting. There's a high-speed pursuit, pins here, and then this execution type deal. Yeah? Yeah. For the first time on network television, the Academy Award-winning Fargo. <laughs> Sunday at 8 p.m. only on TNT. Searching for Fox action. Fox suspense. Fox comedy. Searching for the power of Fox movies? You'll find it on FX. Fox Gone Cable. College gave me the opportunities to do things in life I never ever dreamed about. To this day, I miss the fans, the fun, my teammates. College players today are tougher, quicker, and smarter. My advice to them, stay in school as long as you can. Become a lawyer, a doctor, go to med school, anything. It's a rematch of last year's final when Shaniqua Holtzclaw and the Lady Vols take on Amanda Wilson and Louisiana Tech, Monday at 7 on ESPN2. Stay out of the pros. Kentucky leading Pitt by one with 7.27 left. Tubby Smith loves a passing team, and they had great ball movement here. Yes, they do. You get it to Bradley, he sees he has nothing. The ball moves to Padgett, moves outside to Turner, inside for a layup to Hishimo Evans. That's the way to beat a zone, beat any defense, but particularly a zone, because it's hard to make the adjustment on a pass. A zone defense reacts much better if you dribble a basketball. Kentucky with a one-point lead and the basketball. 
They have Turner, Evans, Padgett, Bradley, and Allison on the floor for Kentucky. They go to a 1 3 1 3 1 zone. Cummings on the point out front. Tipped by Cummings, but back to get it goes Turner. Yeah, but I don't, I don't like the rhythm Kentucky's in. If you, you, you want them to move it a little faster because you've got people on a 1 3 1 chase. Oh, my oh, goodness. Bradley to Allison. What a pass by Bradley. That's what they like about the big man. And probably is going to be one of the better big men to ever be in college basketball in making passes. They are really fond of his passing skills, and you saw some of that right there. Scouting report on him is good touch, will pass, and will he ever? Yeah, he looks to pass. 6.33 to play, first half. Kentucky up by three. Cummings outside, a large Kentucky contingent here in Puerto Rico for this one. Lockhart out of the corner, not going to go. And a whistle. Evans had Hawkins on his back as Hawkins went up to put it back. And a whistle and a foul. Now on this play, here's the big fella. You see him just catch it with one hand and sling it in there. Most coaches don't recommend that kind of pass because he whips it, and really you have enough time to react to it. But you have to applaud Michael Bradley's consideration for at least looking to make the tough pass with three rebounds and six points to go along with that assist. Allison look again. Fred Primus has reported into the game for Pitt for the first time, replacing Lockhart. Evans with a look. It will not go. Padgett tries to put it back. Bradley keeps it alive, but a whistle under there. An elbow stops the clock with 5.54. Ralph Woolwich's concern, concerns are showing up. That's just size that got to that one. Tubby Smith sends his big guys to the basket. Scott Padgett has tipped one in, and then he gets an opportunity to just keep one live. You see right here, Padgett keeps that live, and you see coming over the back is Cosby. He gets called for that foul as Bradley had inside position. Cosby, the 6'9 sophomore, charged with the foul. We have a 20-second timeout asked for in this three-point game, 21-18. Kentucky leading. The car comes in, your body temperature comes up, feel the heat radiating out of your skin. It's nasty hot. We asked some of the hottest guys in the pits to switch antiperspirants. Ultra guy degree, body heat activated. Wow, I've never seen this before. When your body heat rises degrees, powerful ultra dry form releases extra protection when you need it most. This is one of the few products that can keep up with me. It kept me dry, ultra dry. Well, it's better than my old stick. Degree ultra dry, now more than ever, your body heat turns it on. The proof is in the pits. Charlie works in cyberspace, backslash.com all day long. Pamela, she couldn't sing, but kept the beat and kept it strong. The all-new Mazda Protégé. A change from all your high-maintenance relationships. The Wildcats of Kentucky, the defending national champions, ranked fourth in the country. Leading Pitt by three. Pitt knocking off Xavier yesterday to move into the winner's bracket of the semifinals. You know, I think Pitt had some things to prove, Dwayne. I, last year, they go into the Big East Tournament 6-12, and 12, and they, they take Villanova to double overtime to lose that game. And Ralph Willard said what he, and what he really took away from that is that there were guys in the locker room who cried. And if they're crying, it means that much to them. They brought that commitment this year. And a lot of... Action on ESPN.com. All the holiday tournaments from the Great Alaska Shootout here in Puerto Rico, the Chase NIT preseason. Those and more on ESPN.com. Log on. 
Michael Bradley to the line. He's just seven of 18 from the free throw line. Misses this one. And doesn't have a bad stroke either, Dwayne. I mean, it is, that's just, you know, just keep working on it and getting some confidence. Here's Primus letting go with a three and count that one. Fred Primus into the game just before the timeout. He's now eight of 16 this year from three-point range. Yeah, he came in off the bench and was two of four against Texas Pan America. They, he can shoot those. Bradley answers with two. A two-point lead, Kentucky. Kentucky's decided to go a little bit more man-to-man -man because they know they've got to get to the shooters. Hawkins with a bounce pass inside. Cosby back out front. That's Taylor and Primus. Primus will let it go again <laughs> and count that one. He did that a little bit yesterday. Came in down, down a couple shots. Got himself going. Well, Primus hitting two from long range. Out front, Wayne Turner. Allison, the freshman, swings it back. Padgett now will try a three. Oh, way no off. Hey, you can see he's not shooting that with confidence, Dwayne. Montego Cummings back here. Montego Cummings thought he had a big one on him. Sometimes you get those big guys. Ah, I can take him. Shimo Evans showing some defensive ability there. Hit up by one. Courtesy of Primus. Cummings inside. Count that one. Montego Cummings. Did a good job. Too. Yeah, did a good job reading the pick too, Dwayne, because the pick was on the right side of the defender. What they call hedge jumped that way a little bit. And the quickness got him to the basket and Cummins put it down. 408 left to play in the first half. Evans round the screen set by Bradley. Down to the corner, Paget Missed again, but Bradley's right there to put it back. 26-25. Uh, their their three-point shooter has got his head down. Scott Paget has shot two shots, and neither one of them have hit the rim. They've got to find a way to get him on track. And I think if that stubby, if he has a concern, I mean, obviously winning the game, that's got to be one of their big concerns. Kelly Taylor. Taylor on the right side. Pit up by one with a basketball. Cosby. To Taylor, he'll have to go back to get it. You know, really at 15 on the shot clock. Cummings out of the corner over Turner. That's way short. Padge it up with that miss. It was short because Turner got a hand on it. Evans. Padge swings it to Turner. Bradley low. Out to the top. Allison inside. Knocked away from behind by Taylor. Loose ball. Good Padge it and flipped out front. Evans to Turner. Ooh, now trouble. Allison and he turns it over. Walked with a basketball. Scott Padgett is struggling to shoot the basketball but what he's trying to do is make up for it with effort plays and that's why he went down on the floor just to try to get himself back involved. The Glor Kamara all set to return along with Smith when we return following this. It is one of the most powerful warships with satellite communications, radar and propulsion systems that are the most advanced in the world. But USS Mitcher cannot do a single thing without you. Because the most important part of USS Mitcher is her crew of over 250 sailors who every day embark on a journey of honor, of courage, and of commitment. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. Well, my first tattoo was mostly my whole back. So. <laughs> So and that was her second? This was my second, yeah. I don't know, it's friendship tattoos in Tibet. And yeah, I mean, we really don't, I mean, we don't know how to read Tibet. Hope it's just friendship. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it might not even say friendship. Yeah. But, um, but basically, <laughs> I... We have some vicious yeah. fights, so. Yeah, but <laughs> most friends do. <laughs> right? Hey, Gordita fans, check out the Gordita Supreme. Seasoned ground beef, a blend of cheeses, cool sour cream, and freshly chopped tomatoes all on warm, pillowy flatbread. Just 99 cents. We're making one for you right now. Better hurry. Can't this boat go any faster? 
Pitt leading Kentucky by one. 258 to play in the first half. Semifinal action from the Puerto Rico shootout. And we'll have the other game in the semifinal round following this one UCLA and Maryland. Maryland in fifth. A lot of people think the Terrapins might be set to have a big year. We're going to look at them against the young Bruins of UCLA coming up later. Now, the reason people think that Maryland has a better shot at it at the whole. A prize is because they've got a guy named Stevie Francis. They're 6'3 guard, very talented guy. Has to get himself in the system, but Gary Williams has said this is as much talent as, as he's ever had. Pit in control of the basketball, Vantigo Cummings. Cummings takes Kamara to the baseline and puts it up and in. Because he's such a good jump shooter, you close on, on Vantigo, and Kamara was way too close. Cummings goes through the hole. A three-point edge for Pitt. Saul Smith. Evans down in the corner. McClure open at the line. Misses the shot. Pitt coming back. Holmes to Cummings. He's got a look from three. Long range. And he pops it in. <laughs> yeah, he gets on that kind of roll, too. He's a, not streaky. They've got him playing, if you will, more of the two-guard spot, which he more naturally is. Cummings hitting 56% this year from three-point range. It is open. A six-point lead. Cosby knocks it away. The pass intended for McGlure. The thing that's starting to happen with Kentucky is because they have not made any inside shots. Ralph Willis made it, the adjustment you make. You forced them to take those shots, and they, they, they are double-teaming every time the ball gets on the post, and Kentucky had not been able to solve that just yet. Just under two minutes to play in the first half. Kentucky got here with a 64-52 win over Colorado to go 4-0. The Wildcats have won 17 straight. Hit here with a win over Xavier, 94-76. McGlure takes the inbound. Some frantic defensive work over there in the corner by Fred Primus. Well, the, the key word, it's in the corner. Kentucky's got to get the ball out of the corner. McGlure was reluctant to throw it back out toward the half-court line, but he's got to get it out as quickly as he can because the speed of Pittsburgh can get you trapped. Evans out front to Turner now. Saul Smith. They're at 12 on the shot clock. Turner will let it go. He misses the shot. Cummings looking down court. Bounce pass right side, Primus, he can shoot. Misses this one. Tough Hawkins with a rebound in between Evans and Smith. Tries to put it up, not gonna go. Loose ball now. So old Smith loses it off his right leg. Yeah, he's had a bad, by Holmes. A bad day. Back to Holmes who penetrates up, not gonna go. Down to the corner. Out of bounds. Just over a minute left to play. Coming up at halftime, the college football preview highlights from the Duke game in Alaska. Coaching changes, all of that coming up on ESPN2 News when we move into the studio at halftime. You know, we talked about Tayshawn Prince. He hasn't played much here in, in this first half, and I think partially because you, you're playing to get so much speed in Pittsburgh and I would say you know for Ralph Willard that's the kind of thing you want to do take guys out of the game and literally Tubby Smith has done that with Tayshawn Prince. Pitt holding a 31 25 lead Cummings working against Evans down to the corner. You have Primus and Cummings out there definite three point threats for Pitt. That's why they want Sal Smith in the game because he's got to guard Holmes who's the ball handler. Primus back out, 20 on the shot clock. They want to run it down. You can see it's right now at 14. Holmes working against Smith. Back to Cummings, and he walked with a basketball. They got it down to eight on the shot clock, 24 on the first half clock. It, it, that call, and Fred, uh, Ralph Willard, I'm sorry, is, is over trying to get an explanation. But it, it, what it looks like, if he steps into his shot, starts to step, step into that shot and doesn't take it and put it down, they call that almost more often than not. And a timeout here on the floor. 
24 seconds left in the first half. Pitt winners yesterday upsetting Xavier, holding a six point lead on Kentucky, going into the closing seconds of the first half. And they've done a good job of just keeping Kentucky out of, the, keeping the ball out of the middle. I suspect that you'll probably see Tubby Smith come back with a bigger lineup because they've got 24 seconds to try to pound the ball inside to hopefully get a basket and a foul so they can try to get this down by four, but possibly three. Pitt knocking off Ray Xavier yesterday. Their last victory against a top 25 team came in March of 97 when they knocked off Syracuse. They also had wins over Villanova and Michigan headed to the NIT. Nothing so far in the first half for Prince today coming off 15 yesterday. The freshman stepped up in that victory for Kentucky. Different game and, and he's a young player. They obviously Toby's uh, giving him a little coaching lesson. That's kind of what you call it when you sit over there and watch. Now the table wants to talk with the officials to square some matter away with just 24 seconds left. Well Tubby's not and as you might expect most coaches aren't at this stage of the season happy with where his team is and he is hoping that the young players and the other elements of this team as the season progresses will realize its potential. Well uh, yes and I think his biggest concern and I mentioned it here a little bit they don't have any outside shooting. Shimo Evans is a is a if you will a role player that can make plays but he's not a guy you want to count on making jump shots for you and that's what Scott Pageant had normally done and they were hoping Ryan Hogan would knock some shots down for them. Down to 10 on the shot clock with Turner. Paget. There it's four on the first half clock. Paget off to Evans. Got it away, but missed the shot at the buzzer ending the first half. And Pitt will take a 31 to 25 lead into the locker room at halftime over Kentucky despite 10 points from Michael Bradley. Now let's go to the studio here as we break for half from the San Juan shootout. We're at the half in Puerto Rico. Two unbeaten teams here. Pittsburgh coming in 5 and 0, leading 31 25. The very best way to see over 450 college hoop games from top conferences on pay per view is ESPN Full Court. Order today and save $10. Call Direct TV at 1 800 Get Sports or Prime Star at 1 800 Prime Star. 31 25, Pitt leading Kentucky at the half from Puerto Rico. This is my Puerto Rico. Come, discover it. And experience the sounds of 500 years of history. Feel the sound of adventure. Enjoy the sound of our beautiful deep ocean. And the most exciting nightlife in the Caribbean. Only Puerto Rico sounds like this. Only Puerto Rico puts it all within your reach. Listening to the tales of other lives lived and begin the odyssey that will be your story. When you find the destiny to which you were born, all you need to bring with you is your honor, your courage, and your commitment. It's your journey. Make it a good one. Call 1 800 USA Navy. Let the journey begin. driving girl with geographic memory. Karen dumped her boyfriend Jim. Forget that slacker misery. Charlie works in cyberspace. Backslash.com all day long. Pamela, she couldn't sing but kept the beat and kept it strong. The all-new Mazda Protégé. A change from all your high-maintenance relationships. Well, 
Welcome back to the Puerto Rico shootout. We're at halftime with Glenn Buckner, Dwayne Stats, the University of Pittsburgh, leading number four ranked Kentucky by six at the half. Yeah, and Pittsburgh has been very good at keeping the tempo the way they wanted it. They have not allowed the inside play of Kentucky to be really that significant. Kentucky is able to get something going here because they're active. And that's the only way they're going to get it there going. Scott Padgett's has struggled. He got that one. Plays like that will help if you can get the big man to get involved. But here's the guy that's getting away from it. Vontigo Cummings is one of the best unheard of players that I've seen in a very long time. He can get to the basket. He can knock down shots as we take a look at the stats. One of ten for Kentucky for the three-point line. That is part of what the problem they're having because you can see they're plus eight on the rebound side. But let's give Pittsburgh their credit. They only have four turnovers. And that's something that Kentucky prides themselves on. And there's the three-point struggles of Kentucky, including today. Uh, you know, they lost a lot of that one in graduation, if you will. As you see, a nice little inside play to Hawkins because of Jeff Shepard. They had a guy that could knock down some shots for them. So they've got to figure out a way to create a perimeter game. So Hawkins opens with the bucket. Now again from Padgett to Bradley who answers and Bradley hands to Nelson. It's 33-27. Good read by Bradley and Padgett. Particularly Padgett to go back door to get the pass to then to get it over. Montego Cummings. Evans on the steal from Greer and he'll take it in for the jump. Kentucky coming out trying to get something going in the opening moments of the second half. Yeah, well, they didn't play very good, I thought, in the first or second half in the game, in the game yesterday. And I said something to Tubby about it. They were a little flat. This is a much more energetic uh, Kentucky team, and this is the way they've got to play. Montego Cummings. It's a four-point ball game now. Cummings down in the corner. Looking for room. Takes it inside. Not going to go. Follows it. Now Taylor. Taylor steps up for a two-pointer. Count that one. That's, but give Montego Cummings some credit because he went amongst the trees. Come down with that rebound. Cummings, really the heart and soul of this team, stepped in. Here's Padgett with a turn and off the glass and in. Now they, that, that tells you what they're trying to do. They're trying to get him in the offense as quickly as they can. 35-31. Cosby, a big day yesterday, and he has two here with that jumper. Cosby had 23 against Xavier yesterday. That's his first field goal in this game. Evans oh, inside Bradley puts it up and in. Oh, he walked. He tried to make the turn inside, and he didn't put the ball down. He was still able to get away with it and get a left-handed shot up. Kentucky and Pitt trading baskets in the opening minute or two of the second half. Coming out Taylor drops it inside not going to go for Hawkins and Bradley comes away with a miss. Here's Turner Padgett with an open look and that's going to rim out Hawkins with the rebound and he was chopped over there by Bradley. And they, I mean the whole bench was ready to stand up on and that had that shot going in because not only would it made a one point difference but they know that's the confidence that Scott Padgett might have needed. Kelly Taylor handling the basketball for Pitt. Well, Working this is, against Prince. Well, this is what they missed last year because otherwise you put the ball in Vontico Cummings' hand. It's really hard to make plays when you have to do it all the time off the dribble. If you can catch it and make moves, Ralph Willett knows that you have a better chance of catching the defense off guard. And Turner caught as he was trailing Vontigo Cummings. Now the foul against Wayne Turner. Uh, they'll, they'll call this. They, they'll, yeah, they call it on Crosby. He was screaming at Isaac to make Isaac Hawkins to make sure he set a pick for Vontigo coming. And Crosby lost his concentration and stepped out and Chuck Turner. That's how he got that, that foul. So it gives it back to Kentucky. There's Sean Prince. Wayne Turner swings it to Padgett, looking inside Evans. Contested Evans. Plays strong with good hands in there, puts it up and in. Evans makes it a two point game. Oh. Cummings around the screen, set by Hawkins to the glass. Not going to go, but a whistle in there. And again, it was Cummings who took charge. 
I mean, he got open because uh, there was a pick that was set that wasn't called, and the guy got nailed. And then Cummins just make, does a very good job of taking the ball to the defense where they didn't have much choice but to foul. Evans charged with a foul. And Cummings will go to the line. Two shots coming for Vantigo Cummings. 69% shooter last year from the line, and he hits this one. End of this game at 65% from the free throw mark. Bradley leads in favor of Jamal McClure. To come in with a little more defensive presence with Jamal McClure. Bradley, better offensive player, can score, can pass it. But very much like last year with Nazi Muhammad, who's now been has been drafted by Billy King in the Philadelphia 76ers. This gives them the defensive and offensive center. McClure clears the miss. It's a three-point game. Pitt. Paget. Baseline. And that's a big shot for Scott Paget. I think they told Scott Paget, I don't care where you are, if you're close to the basket, look to score. Because he's taking shots with confidence now. The pit lead is down to one. Greer starts to come in and a five second call. Evans against Greer. And the turnover gives Kentucky the ball back. Now, here comes Lockhart into the game, replacing Ricardo Greer for Pittsburgh. Saul Smith is going to enter the game for Kentucky. This is an energy exchange here. With, uh, with bringing Tayshawn Prince and Saul Smith because they can defend better. The, the move that, that Ralph Miller made was one that he just needed to get another score on the floor, and Greer has struggled so far. Wayne Turner controlling the ball for Kentucky. 1-3-1 one, one zone. They usually can cover it with the foul line extended from the shooters. Evans down in the corner. Cosby there, and a pass picked off by Hawkins. Taylor. Coming back for the University of Pittsburgh. They're trying to withstand this Kentucky charge at the start of the second half. It was a six point lead at the half. That lead is down to one. Lockhart, Ventigo Cummings. Inside, calls feed to the bucket, and it's rejected. McLaurin Padgett in there, call Timber. Evans, now Turner. Looking low, Padgett Good underneath. Save. He got his man Cosby in the air, missed it, but drew the whistle. What a great pass, though, by Wayne Turner. One of the toughest passes to make, and you're basically taught not to make it, if you will, is the direct entry pass that way. I mean, straight down the line. But you've got to get the ball first. Padgett here guarding Cosby. You see McClure comes over and gets it over the top as Padgett forces the play. But now you see Kentucky revving it up a little bit, being a little more aggressive on both sides of the ball. Now watch this entry. Slide it right down there. And then a good head and shoulder fake by Padgett gets him to the foul line for two shots. Now Padgett goes to the line for the year just under 75 percent and he hits this one to tie the game at 38. Now Cosby departs for Pittsburgh and Ricardo Greer returns. Yeah, they go with a little bit of smaller lineup here now. They're almost basically four guards because when you, you're coming in with Greer, Greer can play any one of, if you will, almost four positions. He's 6'5", but he plays, you know, power forward, small point, and shooting guard. Game tied following the miss. Montego Cummings with the basketball. Taylor, Turner with him. To swing it to the other side. Lockhart, Hawkins, outside from 15. That's not going to go. They had Greer and Taylor trying to crash the boards. Two of the little guys, and the ball is out of bounds. Well, that's the risk you run when you get with a smaller lineup. You can't rebound. Ball belongs to Kentucky, tied at 38. Find the one that's unlike any other, that's when it's love. That's when it's Dr. Pepper. Once they roamed the seas and explored the skies, but today, 
they're on the net. They are pioneers discovering a new world, a new world of e-commerce, of high-speed internet access. That's where Vario comes in. For we are the pioneers of the internet, the hosts of the new world, the leader in websites with state-of-the-art connections and a tier one backbone for everything you need from the net. Vario, the new world of business. The holidays are coming. This time, Dwayne McPheeters is ready. A little while ago, he called the money store. We approved a home equity loan, paid off all his credit cards, got him back on track, and took a lot of worry off his mind in only two and a half weeks. So give us a call. The holidays are coming, and it's nice to be ready. The Money Store. 1-800-LOAN-YES. Pittsburgh and Kentucky tied 38 here with 1457 to play in the semifinal round of the winner's bracket. The governor of Puerto Rico is with us, Dr. Pedro Rosell. He was elected in 92 and re-elected in 96, so he's doing something right here. Sit right next to him is the president of the American University here in Puerto Rico, Juan Masadio. And I think there's been a collaborative effort. I think most of you know with the hurricane that a lot of things were really knocked out here. And I think the effort that's been made collaboratively has been really good to put this whole uh, shootout tournament on. I just think they've done a remarkable job under the circumstances. And when you think of the time frame, things are in great shape. Here we have a tie game and a great field in this tournament. Smith with the jumper. Going to be a little short. 25. And a whistle. It's got to be Patrick on Greer. went down and Greer was in front of him with the arm. And he pulled him down. I mean, because Padgett had the ball. Greer actually makes a good play for pulling it down because if he doesn't pull it down, he gets the rebound in the basket. So that's a foul you you've got you have to take. Smith will inbound along the baseline. Ralph Willard, fifth year here with Pittsburgh. If they're healthy, they're going to be heard from a lot this year. Yeah, they don't have over you know overwhelming size, but they have guys that can play big. They have tough guys, very tough guys. Out of the corner, Evans misses. Greer with a rebound. Lockhart, a three. Ooh. Yes, got that one from long range over Evans. <laughs> wow. Let it fly, Jared. <laughs> Hit by three. Badgett looking low, no place to go. Turner. From the line. Count that one for two. Wayne Turner hits a big jumper. Yeah, you see, you give some leadership there because I didn't think the offense was well spaced or anything. He created a shot. Taylor, nice pass. Hawkins a little long off the glass. McClure with a rebound. Here's Turner back for Kentucky. Ball loose on the floor away. Cummings trying to corral it. He He'll comes up and will shoot from three and count. That baby. Yeah, he'll, he shoots up. He gets you in transition, and there's a tendency once you get back not to close out. That's when he'll shoot the shot. So a couple threes from the pit guards. Pit eight of 14 from three-point range. Kentucky just one of 12 on the day. Smith sideline down to the corner. Turner back out front. Padgett. Gets rid of the ball to Turner. Turner penetrating off the glass for the layup. I like what Wayne Turner's doing. Your point guard is seeing where the opportunities are. It's almost like he played the first hand, was sizing up like boxing. Now he sees there are angles he can get because of the concern about the inside play. Cummings inside with a give to Greer, and Greer converts. Ricardo Greer, the sophomore out of New York City. Four-point lead, Pitt. Evans on the wing. Low McClure. Back out, Smith. And a reach across here by Greer as they get the ball 
to Padgett knocked away and the foul. Now you got to look at transition for threes here. You see Lockhart. Lockhart was deep. He was by the NBA three-pointer, three-point line. Sometimes it's hard to get there, but you've got to know where the, the shooters or the real players on the team are going to be. And another one that was taken was just the ball flew loose and Vontigo Cummings just drilled one. Jeremy Holmes in for Pitt. Prince back for Kentucky. Because they, uh, here's Tubby's guess. If you're going to go small, we're going to make you pay by getting some bigger people in the lineup. Smith off to Prince, looks for three. Not this time. McClure keeps it alive. That's the size factor. Too, it's too tough for Prince to come in and have to take a three point shot. He almost needed to step in two steps. Nobody's got him, and he's not making any sign to be caught. Nobody has him. McClure. And a whistle that's going to be against Greer. He's giving away a lot of height and picks up a foul. Well, that's that's why they put him in, put uh, Tayshawn Prince in to make him have to make a decision. And they tried to stay in his zone, and everybody got over to the right side, and nobody even saw Tayshawn Prince, and he never tried to be seen. Three on Greer. Padgett. And Padgett finds Evans who connects. It's a two-point game. The one area that you're exposed in a 1-3-1 zone there's only one man, and they backpicked that man, and that's how Hushimu Evans was able to get that done. Cummings. This is Holmes up the sideline. Lockhart working against Prince. Knocked away and stolen by Smith. Pass intended for Cummings. Because Prince can put enough pressure on Lockhart. He couldn't time when he wanted to get the ball out to Cummings. And uh, saw Smith ready. Evans leading with Floor, And that's going to roll off. Hawkins covers on the rebound. Holmes off to Cummings. Cummings looking for some space. He'll get it here. Long range, not this time. Hawkins tries to reach over Evans and is charged with a foul. I thought Cummings would try to create the space, by, but he instead he took a jump shot. You've got Jamal McClure on you. You've got to find a way to get around him. So it's a 46-44 ball game. And size is becoming a factor. 10-54 left to play. National, we always thought of ourselves as the top car rental company, and now we're glad to see that our customers agree. You see, according to a J.D. Power and Associates study, National's just been ranked the highest car rental company in customer satisfaction in a tie. Thanks. We couldn't have done it without you. Let's go. Bite in four hours. <laughs> I got another one. I'm Hank Parker. If you want deep sea fish in action, get Radica. Here, you bring him in. He's taking a lot of wine. Radica, it's just like the real thing. Fish Cabo, Kona, Great Barrier Reef, Marlin, Sailfish, Swordfish, they strike all the time. I got an 800 pounder. Game shakes when they strike. Find them with pump and real action. So who needs a boat? <laughs> get deep sea fishing. Another great game for Radica, maker of the original lunker and bass fishing. Pittsburgh holding a two-point lead over number four, Kentucky, with 10.54 to play. Next Saturday live at 1 Eastern on ABC Sports, we've got college football regional action, a battle in the Big Ten when Michigan State takes on Penn State, or you'll see the showdown in the ACC when North Carolina State squares off against North Carolina. 
Don't forget to check your local listings for the game in your area. Don't miss college football goes prime time. It'll be Notre Dame taking on the Trojans from USC live at 8 Eastern. Call your cable or satellite company for games available on pay-per-view. Hawkins with three fouls at the 10:54 mark, and that did not rest well with Ralph Willard. No, he was trying. To, he's got to fight for his, for particularly Hawkins. Hawkins led the Big East in rebounds last year and almost had a tip, triple double. I mean, a double double for an average. So they need to keep Hawkins on the floor. He averaged 9.2 rebounds last year with 14 points. Iron Anthony in the game for the second time for Kentucky. He is making this trip. Because he won't miss any classes. Tubby Smith said he could not travel. If he had to play and miss class. No classes during the holidays until he is in action here making this trip with the Kentucky Wildcats. Inside Bradley back on the floor puts it up and in to tie the game at two. He was able to get the ball and put it on the floor before anybody got to him. And if he's able to allow to do that, Isaac with Isaac uh, Hawkins with three fouls can't foul. Him. So Bradley's two makes it a 46-46 game. Just over 10 minutes to play. Hawkins drawing a double team low. Knocked away by Turner on a pass intended for Cummings. You can see why they want Anthony on the floor, because that was the smarter player she could make. Because Bradley had him on the backside, and Hawkins wisely got body to body with Bradley so Hawkins couldn't split split him and uh, almost got the ball for Kentucky. Cummings to initiate the inbound. Primus on the floor for Pittsburgh. Some three-point punch. Jules Suleiman is 6'10, trying to guard Jeremy Holmes. Holmes oh, up and in. And Holmes won that one. Holmes, the junior guard, gives Pitt a two point lead. Wayne Turner, Tamara, Anthony. Side. Turner leans in, misses the shot, but there's a whistle. Foul against Pitt coming. Tubby Smith has his guys looking inside, and I tell you what, what the, Wayne Turner has made some advances in his game to recognize because Bradley got the easy shot before the defense start going below the foul line. So Turner tried to turn the corner and got fouled. Holmes charged with the foul. Turner at the line. Evans back replacing Prince for Kentucky. Turner into the game six of eight from the line for the year. 62% shooter last year from the free throw line and misses this one. Yeah, he's got an awkward, uh, kind of really an awkward shot. Even in his jump shot, he gets the ball way over and has to move it back. And most good shooters will tell you they just have one straight line going toward the basket. Cosby replaces Greer for Pitt. Turner with another shot. He misses them both, and Cosby's in there to rebound it. Holmes now back. Jeremy Holmes been holding the lead with the ball. Turner got a hand on it, deflects it out of bounds. Yeah, important things, he got a hand on it, not a foot, because it had been a reset. I thought he kicked it. Right here, you just see it goes. Yeah, he gets a hand on it. He kicks it. They reset the 45 second clock. Primus trying to go inside to Hawkins and a reach across by Michael Bradley to pick up the foul. Scott Padgett's going to return to the game for Kentucky. He'll replace Jules Kamara. Holmes inbounding baseline. Jules getting a little instruction on the way out as well. Montego Cummings takes it inside, drops it off, down to the corner. Cummings with his hands on the ball again. Out of time on the shot clock. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, it's like a, the ball is a string on this young man's hand. Cosby with a little jumper inside from about 12. Well, that, that was all made because Montego Cummings had the defense trying to figure out where he was, and then, then you get shooters free. Anthony inside. Ishimu Evans really had to work his way around Primus and Cosby for a bucket. <laughs> Dwayne, you get that many steps, you can work your way around too. 
Travis from three. Oh, he hits again. That's the way to put Primus. pressure on people. Primus had a game at a high school when he hit 12 threes. He is a danger from downtown. 53 48 Pittsburgh. Wayne Turner. Yeah, Kentucky's having some trouble figuring out what they want to get into. Ball loose. Easy turnover. Cummings will complete it on the other end on the pass from Jeremy Hall. Yeah, I was saying easy with I mean, an easy layup. It's kind of the thing you holler out if you got an easy one. I used to holler out easy so you can get the ball up ahead. 55 48. Pitt back out in front. Evans with a jumper, a little long. Follows it in, no good. Got another one. Holmes with a pass. Cummings. Cosby will not drop. Bradley with the rebound. An important rebound for Kentucky here. Evans down to Padgett against Cosby. Works. That's going to drop and a foul. Well, that's what they've got to go with. Shimo Evans shooting jump shots not going to get it. Pageant has not been able to make jump shots, but they had some good play, had a good play to Bradley inside, so they just got to work on the inside. I mean, Pageant does a good job establishing position, then he fakes it to the middle and goes baseline, and Crosby tries to go straight up, but there's contact made, and that call oh, is usually one. made. That call is made. Smith and Prince back. Anthony and Evans depart. Padgett at the line with a chance to convert a three point play. The foul to Cosby. This one will not go. Hawkins down to the deflection. And that was the flange ball. Didn't have any chance to go I mean, when you shoot it back there. Jeremy Holmes. A five point pit lead. They led by six at the half. Greer off the glass, taking the bounce pass from Primus. And, and Primus just, I mean, Holmes went around the, that's so easy around to Sean Prince. There's no way the defense can help. Prince with the bounce pass to Saul Smith. Bradley, it's contested by Holmes underneath against Padgett, and Holmes comes out of there with a loose ball. Contigo Cummings got his hand on the ball. Cummings oh, down the lane, up and in. Contigo Cummings with the layup. 59 50 hit. 5.55 to play. Here's a hold on Primus as Prince turned on him. It was the Primus who was just trying to see what the official was going to call. You see right here. Yeah, you see him, he gets a, an extra step on that, that one. But he's excited about it and should be because this team has a nine point lead with five to go. And they're going to give him a break right now. Prince will go to the line. Taylor will give Cummings a breather for Pitt. Prince misses the shot. Now, you talked about this when we did the game yesterday. This was an Achilles heel of theirs as well. Not a very good, not the kind of free throw shooting team you need to be. 56% on the year as a team for Kentucky. Holmes working out front against Turner. Five and second. a five second call. It'll go back to the Wildcats. Holmes got mad at his teammates for not moving, but he's got to break inside with the ball and then come back out. It's a nine point spread. Pitt, timeout on the floor. The best place to buy appliances, air conditioners, and big screen TV? Well, more consumers from Montauk to Manhattan buy where the builders buy at Granado Appliance and Valley Stream. All the top brands at great prices. Unbeatable prices on GE appliances from a new super capacity GE washer to a new GE refrigerator to an entire GE kitchen, including GE monogram professional appliances. Plus, Granado Appliance offers a kind of expertise and service not found in any ordinary appliance store. Come and take advantage of the great buys at Granado Appliance and buy where the builders buy. 
It's not your ordinary town. Okay, real good. It's not your ordinary crime. You want your own wife kidnapped. Are you, hon? And she's definitely not your ordinary cop. Think I'm gonna burp. Oh, jeez. We got a shooting. There's a high-speed pursuit. Ends here, and then this execution type deal. Yeah? Yeah. For the first time on network television, the Academy Award winning Fargo. <laughs> Sunday at 8 p.m. only on TNT. Catch everything that happens in the NFL this weekend on ESPN. From our studio shows to ESPN Sunday Night Football, it's the NFL on ESPN. Sunday at 11, it's NFL Countdown. At 7.30, it's NFL Primetime. And at 8.15, it's ESPN Sunday Night Football. Denver at San Diego. Then, Monday at 6.30, it's Monday Night Countdown. The NFL is on ESPN. Pittsburgh leading Kentucky by nine after holding a six-point halftime lead. They have withstood a Kentucky run. Well, what they've done is been able to use their quickness to their advantage. Don't necessarily have the size, so the ball gets pushed out quickly here. Montego Cummings watches the defense not get back. No one stops him. He does a good job getting inside for the layup to give his team this two point, this seven, nine point lead, getting a little breather at the moment. Ashibu Evans and Turner bring it back. A look at yesterday and today from three point range, and it has been. Hardly a thing for Kentucky. The Wildcats stone cold from three point territory. Some of it is stone cold. Some of it is. I don't know if they have the shooters. And, and right now, they're putting Ryan Hogan in the game, who, who is considered a shooter, because they, they just don't have guys that can shoot the shot. And the reason he's coming in for Saul Smith is that pass that was thrown to Saul, he was wide open and never even looked at the basket. Now, Prince will initiate the inbound. Cummings back into the game for Pitt. He played 18 minutes in the first half. I suspect he'll play close to that in the second half. He'll get 38, 9, 39 minutes. Last year he averaged 40.1. Hogan got up there and then had no place to go. No, he's Rear nervous. Up with it. He's nervous. Flat out nervous. He just got off the bench and had to shoot a three pointer. I saw him wipe his hand. He breaks up this pass. Ball belongs to Pitt. Yeah, he was just nervous, and, and he needs to be able to take the shot. That's why he's in the game. Now Holmes into the game, replacing Primus for Pitt. Cummings inbounding. We're at the five-minute mark with Pitt leading by nine. Yeah, well, all of a sudden they had to make a decision. They were yeah, they, they, they had changed defense up a little bit, and what you had was Ryan Hogan was about to get caught on Vontigo coming, so they ended up running Hogan out, and Wayne Turner went to get him, but the defense looked confusing to Ralph Willett and his team, so he took a 30-second. So timeout with 4.53 to play in the contest. Well, there was some surprise here yesterday when Pittsburgh pretty much dominated Xavier 94-76. I'd say the surprise was, was part of I think it, being impressed with what they do was as much of what I had. They hold a nine point lead on the defending national champion Kentucky Wildcats. There's that look in the corner from Hogan. Yeah, see he had a shot because the pick was set by Hushimu Evans and, and Ryan Hogan is a shooter. The tough part about it, and you have to feel for it, you gotta remember this is a, a young man trying to establish himself. You come off the bench, it's hard to come and turn off a pick to shoot a three-pointer, but that's what he's on the floor for. Primus back in the game, replacing Holmes for Pitt. Cummings. Turner with him. Primus and Evans, the pairing. This is that's who they're going to try to take if they get a chance. It's Ryan Hogan. If Antigo Cummings doesn't get it, Taylor's going to try to take it. Taylor out there. They're at seven on the shot clock. Greer inside. They shovel it off. That ball is knocked away. A loose ball inside, and back goes Taylor. Keeps it alive along the sideline in front of the Kentucky bench. Into the corner, out of the corner goes Promise with a shot missed. Hawkins rebounding and a foul against Kentucky. A pit 
was able on that possession, and they may have they may have locked this thing. And this is a little early to say that. But what happened here was they had the shot clock down, and they're able to get new 45 second clock, if you will, now because Kelly Taylor was able to chase that ball down, and now they go to get the ball out of bounds again. The foul on Hogan with a fresh 45 seconds on the shot clock. Hogan leaves and Smith back in, so that didn't work out. No. They couldn't get anything. He couldn't get anything going. And, and you, you feel for it for a young man when he gets in that situation, but they had to take him out because otherwise Kentucky gets nothing. Coming for the ball out front. Down to four minutes, it's still a nine-point lead. And good ball handlers on the part of Pitt is going to make this difficult for Kentucky to contain. Cummings down in that corner and back out again. Spinning. And there's a whistle on the floor. You see what I mean? Because he's so good with the basketball that they've got Taylor on the floor, they got Greer can handle the ball, and then Primus. And so they can get it, he can get releases from them. Then he handles it. Well, to Turner, 351 left to play. 59 50 Pitt leading Kentucky. This is my Puerto Rico. Come discover it. And experience the sounds of 500 years of history. Enjoy the sounds of our beautiful beaches. <laughs> An incredible natural wonder. Come, feel the unique sounds of our people. Only Puerto Rico sounds like this. Only Puerto Rico puts it all within your reach. Lunch. Yeah, let's go to a steakhouse. Right. Then we'll buy a couple of sports cars and race to the coast. No, I'm serious. Excuse me, uh, this is Wendy's. Observe. Steakhouse bacon cheeseburger, please. Make that too with uh, baked potato and a side salad. He's buying. Wendy's new steakhouse bacon cheeseburger is naturally smoked cheddar and Swiss, bacon, and sauteed onions in a steak sauce, so it tastes like a cheeseburger you'd get at a steakhouse. Please give my compliments to the chef. Try Wendy's new steakhouse bacon cheeseburger today. I went up to Ithaca to play with uh, another band. This was in another band. And uh, after the set, I was approached by two girls. And um, <laughs> let's just put it this way. I didn't expect that kind of thing to happen. But they uh, took me to their house, and uh, it was a great night. <laughs> Can we leave it at that? <laughs> that was pretty cool. Pittsburgh leading by nine, 59 50 over Kentucky, 351 left to play. More basketball tonight on ESPN from the Hall of Fame tip off classic, number seven, Kansas and UNLV. And the Chase preseason NIT from New York at 9 30. That'll be Stanford and North Carolina squaring off from the Great Alaska Shootout at 9 30 Eastern Duke and Fresno State at midnight. All tonight on ESPN. Cummings off the inbound, <laughs> keeps it alive and puts it back up and in. After the miss, Cummings put his own shot back up and in. They threw him a lob. I mean, they come out of a timeout. What a great play by Ralph Willis to throw your point guard a lob. 61-50. Turner fouled on the floor. Well, that, that's just one of the things I thought they needed to get to. Because they've got to get to the penalty situation, this Kentucky, so they can try. I mean, though they're not a very good foul shooting team, but they've got to get to the foul line because they get two shots. That you know they're, they're at the ten point, uh, ten foul rule, so they get two shots every time. That way, you get them without using up some clock. Otherwise, they'll have a very good, difficult time beating this good pit team. So Turner looking for two, and this one will not go for him. Well, here's a situation where their inability to consistently hit foul shots will hurt them as they try to come back. Can they cash in? Turner missed the first one, makes the second one, 61-51. This is where I think the real problem is with right here on the floor because it's hard to contain this young man because he's just so clever with the ball. Cummings Look at that. With uh, <laughs> give to Greer on the pass underneath, and he draws the whistle. That's a that's a big time pass that Vontigo Cummings makes off a spin move to find that that pass is made into traffic. Evans, 
Evans charged with a foul. Look at this pass. I mean, right there, he just just gets it going, and Greer almost makes this. Greer, matter of fact, is the only guy in the history of the Big East tournament to have a triple double. So here's a guy with with great strength and versatility, who's able to get in and and, and do some things. So they, that's one reason why they got him back on the floor because he's, he's so versatile. He converts the first one. Bradley in for Prince for Kentucky. Now Greer accomplished that in the Big East tournament as a freshman. Knocked those free throws down like he was out just maybe on the beaches of Puerto Rico <laughs> on the <a> scroll. <laughs> <laughs> that opens a 63-51 lead. Paget from long range not going to go. Hawkins covers on the rebound. And timeout pit. And Buntigo Cummings was on the ground screaming for it. He, he was down and couldn't get the official to hear him. So Pitt calls for a timeout. Cummings lodging a slight protest there of not being heard for the timeout. <laughs> <laughs> he says, wait a minute. <laughs> the bigger issue was they couldn't see him. He was on the floor. <laughs> he was a voice in the wilderness. So it's 63-51 with 3.06 left. The last loss on a neutral court came at the Maui Invitational for Kentucky in November of 97. Overall, the Kentucky Wildcats have won 17 straight coming into this game, 4-0 this year, and in big trouble against Pittsburgh today. They're running into a team. Th this team is playing for a reason. Uh, I mean, with with a real sense of purpose, and I think that's that's where Pittsburgh is. They're, they're trying to prove something, and those are the toughest teams to play against. Antigo Cummings through the backcourt, under three to play. Anthony with a swipe, ball loose and retrieved by Cummings. Rear around Evans back. See what that's but what they get. They got ball handlers. They got three of them, actually four of them on the on the floor. Three of them. Greer takes it inside, but a charge. Turner hit the deck, and a charge assessed against Ricardo Greer. Not a play to make then. You don't need to force. You don't need shots. You don't necessarily need a shot that you've got to force. Ricardo Greer. You need an acting job. Because <laughs> Wayne Turner's doing a little bit of that. Smith with a jumper from three and will not drop for him. Evans tried to keep it alive, but instead lost it out of bounds. And Pitt will have the basketball. 2.22 to play and a 12 point lead for Pitt. Some people say, why, you know, you're in a tournament, but they would say, why would you schedule, you know, a tough game like this or be in a tough tournament like this? This is a measuring stick. Kentucky knows clearly where they're vulnerable. And now for Pitt, They've developed some confidence in themselves by first of all beating Xavier, who was what ranked ahead of them, and now Kentucky as well. So th that's what comes out of this with these young people. And Smith fouling Cummings, reaching around. Cummings goes to the line. That foul stops the clock at 2:13. Tubby Smith, knowing that his club is not hitting on all cylinders, but certainly he expects him to be there. Come tournament time. I always say this. It, it, assuming they lose it, the way things are going, it looks that way. The one thing about it is he'll have something that he can talk to him about, and they'll know exactly what he means. They'll be paying a lot more attention if they lose this game. Kentucky comes out of there with possession of the basketball on the Cummings miss. It's one of the few things Cummings has not done today. He is such a force for this pit team. You know what he is, and W. Smith can they appreciate that he really can control the tempo by only touching the ball a few times. Wayne Turner for the Wildcats. Here's Evans looking for a three, and he nails it. Now Kentucky will stop the clock with 2:02 left. Well, they have it under 10. 63-54 with two minutes and two seconds left. Not out of the question. No, not by any means out of the question. I, I, that's why I wasn't making it a foregone conclusion and saying if. But I tell you, it, it's a very difficult thing to do. They set the pick for Shimu Evans, who comes out, gets a good look. 
here before has not been able to knock him down with really real consistency but he's just able to just stroke that one if you have trouble shooting outside and trouble making your free throws it's tough to make up a deficit in the closing minutes of a game and that's what Kentucky's faced with right now yeah that's their challenge to figure out a way that the best thing they can do and, and here's compounds the challenge is to try to come up with some steals well, they didn't get a lot in the first half. Matter of fact, Pitt had eight steals on the eight turnovers that Kentucky had. They're more apt to get a steal than it's Kentucky. Hawkins in the backcourt, double team. Kelly Taylor across the timeline with a minute 50 to play. And about eight seconds on the 10 second count, too. Yep. Greer backs out. They've got 25 on the shot clock, 139 on the game clock. Taylor. A bounce pass to the baseline and back out to Greer. Cummings, great leaping ability after that pass. And this is where they wanted the ball to go. Cummings to the glass, up and in. Oh. Absolutely where they wanted the ball to go. There was no doubt. They, that's why they never put it in his hands before that, because they wanted him to have his energy to explode. 65-54, Pittsburgh. Wayne Turner, the shooting from three-point range. Hit over 50%. Smith misses this one. Oh. Battling to the ball. A scramble Good for effort. that loose ball. Taylor, but Smith is there, and now he falls, and Greer comes up with it. Pittsburgh basketball with a minute two left to play, and a whistle stops the clock. The foul on Evans. And I meant good effort by all three of the players. Tubby Smith knows you've got to have some outstanding effort to win games. And Ralph Willett's group on that particular play, you saw guys going to the floor to come up with the basketball. And they've implemented, I think, his game plan extremely well. Oh, look what we got next. Only the first game of two today. We have two ranked teams in UCLA and Maryland coming up next. And who knows what could happen in that one. Well, if you get to see an outstanding Stevie Francis, LeBron Prophet from Maryland, UCLA has a very young team, and I think eventually that will be something that they have to overcome is just the inexperience of their team. They started four freshmen in their last game and a sophomore. That's, that's tar hard to overcome. That one coming up on the heels of this one. Semifinal action in the winner's bracket from the Puerto Rico shootout. Isaac Hawkins converts this one. The junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Backing them all off the foul line, Isaac Hawkins. Doesn't look very much like he's concerned about a whole lot here. A 12-point lead. He converts that one as well. Pittsburgh on the verge of going 6-0. Turner as it stripped Cosby on the steal took it away from him back to Cummings Greer to Hawkins they'll take time Taylor out there and he's going to be fouled reaching in is Evans that stops the clock with 40 seconds left and the Panthers of Pittsburgh <laughs> feeling some of that confidence. Brown Willard's team up 67-54 with just 40 seconds left to play. Yeah, I don't think anybody thought that Kentucky was going to find themselves in this position. But I, Pittsburgh showed me yesterday, first time I've had a chance to see them this year. But I mean, what they did with Xavier, who likes the up and down game, they took, they played that game with Xavier, slowed this one down a little bit and still able to come out with a victory showing you how versatile they are and good teams have to be able to play both up tempo and slow it down. They've been a team on the verge the last few years of making a national presence felt. Taylor missing this one. They are healthy this year for the most part. And that's been the key here early. They've got they've been healthy and you when you look at this team you've got to think of this these guys practice against each other so these are some competitive practices and practices are really your school and now the test today obviously they look like they're going to get a pretty good grade Taylor makes it a 68 54 game Wayne Turner front court for Kentucky he'll let it go for three no good coming to the rebound knocked away and a whistle. Knocked out of bounds by Padgett. 
31 seconds left to play in non conference games for Pitt since they joined the Big East in 82 83 their winning percentage has been 69 percent. This one will be a very big win for this program. Oh yeah I think it's a huge win as you look at Hashimu Evans who fouled out with 13 points and no rebounds. But they've, they've got I'm telling you what they've got a guy that I don't you've got to consider one of the all Americans in the country and they haven't had an all American since they had Charles Smith who played at Pittsburgh and then went on to play with the Knicks and then San Antonio as well as the Los Angeles Clippers so they, and they've got a guy on his hand the guy's a star. Kentucky ball with 17 seconds left. Vantigo Cummings the senior out of Thompson Georgia all Big East last year averaged 19 and a half points a game third leading score last year in the Big East and as a senior we have seen a preview of some great things to come from Cummings this year. Yeah and a toast to Pittsburgh because I'm telling you this game was not one that they happened they, they they that Kentucky lost this is one that Pittsburgh won. This one out of bounds down to six ticks on the clock. It's 68 54 Pittsburgh on the verge of going six and all. It will be the best start ever at Pittsburgh under Coach Willard. The shot no good. Final shot up and count that one. He got it in just before the buzzer. Two points. But it's all academic as Pittsburgh has upended Kentucky. The final 68 56 a win for Ralph Willard and the Panthers of Pittsburgh over Kentucky. Happy birthday. Oh good another apple. Where's Danny. Mike Ditka for 1 800 Collect. Hey, come on, ladies! Hey, get mad! Make believe I just insulted your mama! Or make believe I just traded you! Make believe I just called you Collect without using 1 800 Collect! Hey, but it's 10 cents a minute every evening with 1 800 Collect. Stop, stop, guys! I was on the kid! Stop! 1 800 Collect. 10 cents a minute every evening all week long. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the Puerto Rico Tourism Company. A major upset and the Puerto Rico shootout. Pittsburgh 68, number four ranked Kentucky 56. So Pittsburgh will move into the championship game tomorrow against the winner of our game coming up, UCLA and Maryland. We'll be back with you at the bottom of the hour for that one to see who advances to meet this Pittsburgh Panther team now six and zero. Oh. again our final score Pittsburgh 68 Kentucky 56 for Gwen Buckner Dwayne Stats reminding you ESPN News is next UCLA and Maryland coming up at the bottom of the hour ESPN News coming up next.